Murdoch, my favourite carry so it's only right I show you how I built him for ultimate destruction. As always, I'll show you the build, talk you through the build order and give you some tips on how to get the best out of this hero and carry games as a solo queue player. Let's start off with your deck. We of course want the Archmagus as our prime card, a barrier token and guard token as well as a health potion. Now I only take the barrier token and guard token because I don't have any cast tokens, so if you have a cast token you should definitely take these instead. Next we have our two Madstone Gems, the first with 3 casts and the second with 2 casts and a Kinetic. This will give you a lot of damage and some attack speed and as such you already start to become a threat early on in the game. We then have our Sage's Ward, now I don't really like to keep wards late game especially if I'm in solo queue which is where I use Murdoch the most, so I take them and then just discard them when I need the slot. The thinking behind this is simple, I'm trying to carry in solo queue so I should just maximise my damage output. We then have our brand of the Iron Eater with 3 greater drains because lifesteal will almost certainly help you stay alive and you can rely less on your teammates in tricky situations because you'll be able to regenerate your health quite quickly. You could always use Vital Tap if you don't have brand of the Iron Eater. I like brand of the Iron Eater though because we have that 3% crit chance and while it's not much, when you do hit it, it catches the enemy by surprise. We then have a Whirling Wand with 2 major casts and a Vicious Kinetic and then another Whirling Wand with a major cast, minor cast and major kinetic. You could probably curve this out a bit better but I don't have enough casts. Our final card is a Meltdown with 3 casts and a Shock. I like to have a bit of extra penetration especially if the enemy team has a Rampage. This gives you a chance to actually kill the OP motherfucker and that's pretty much it. I find with carries you don't have to be that flexible in your build. You could add in some extra shocks for more energy penetration but in all honesty most carries focus on damage, attack speed and lifesteal and of course crit if you go down that path. Now how do you build him? Well in solo queue my goal is always to get ahead as quickly as possible. You can't rely on your teammates and it's really hit and miss when it comes to them helping you out. So I like to focus on building damage, attack speed and getting my lifesteal around 4th or 5th card. So we start off with a health potion, madstone gem with 3 casts for the early game damage and once we max out our madstone gem we'll have enough damage to easily last hit and pick off some heroes if possible. You can take a Madstone gem and then grab a token when you next back. I usually take the armor token for the hero I'm laning against. So if it's a Twin Blast for example you want a guard token. You can also take wards as early as you want or as late as you want but you only really need them in the early to mid game. Remember this guide is focusing on carrying as a solo queue player so we really need to focus on damage, damage and more damage. Once I've maxed out my second Madstone gem I then focus on my Whirling Wand and Meltdown. You can get the Whirling Wand with 2 major casts and a Vicious Kinetic. Remember to use a Shock if you're up against tanky heroes as this will help you out quite a bit. You then want to focus on getting your lifesteal and your final whirling wand. Sometimes I will take my lifesteal earlier and my build order is never really set in stone. I adapt it to the situation. If I'm ahead I like to take my lifesteal earlier so usually my fourth card but if I feel I can benefit from the damage and the enemy team are also taking lifesteal quite late I might go for lifesteal for my like fifth card but generally it's double madstone gem, whirling wand and then brand of the iron eater so your lifesteal and then meltdown and a whirling one. I'm just showing you guys some alternatives. Now probably the most important part of the guide, how to actually play Murdoch. He has a fantastic kit in my opinion so we should of course use that to our advantage. Although I get close to 20 kills in quite a lot of my solo queue games, I like everyone do make mistakes that often cause me to get around 3 deaths as well. I'll talk about how to get these many kills in a game but also how to avoid dying as much as I do and although it's not that easy, hopefully we can improve together. I mean it's not really about your KDA as well, it's about winning the game but getting kills goes a long way into accomplishing that. Just a quick tip, if you see your lane is empty have a look round the sides or on the shadow pad because 2 or 3 heroes could be hiding there waiting for you to push up and potentially gank you. On Murdoch I like to unlock my box shot first. Now I'll show you another awesome tip with your box shot. 
Firstly, it shreds armor, so you want to use your Q on enemy heroes and then follow up with your basic attack to deal more damage, but also you want to use your Q on enemy structures. Now remember, towers and inhibitors now have armor, so you can shred X amount of armor from those structures depending on your level. You'll be able to take them down quicker. This is so useful and another reason why I love Murdoch. His traps are also so good, I like to cover this path from the jungle to the lane so that I have a chance to escape if I'm getting ganked and I'll do the same to the other path if I get the chance. I think his ultimate really speaks for itself, a global sniper that does a huge amount of damage. His shields are also pretty good, it displaces any enemy near you and also does a bit of damage. I like to focus my Q and ultimate and then traps and my shield because upgrading his Q or buckshot increases the damage and the armor me you shred. Now here's some mistakes I make and I see a lot of other players also make. You'll notice that apart from steel, pretty much all the enemy heroes are missing. This indicates that I should back the fuck up like right now, but me being greedy for kills, I do the exact opposite. Now this could end really badly for me, but fortunately I managed to kill steel and then as expected I get ganked. So it was a 1v1 trade, but steel could have easily not engaged and I would have died. So it's really important that in solo queue, you're not really going to get pinged from other players so they're not going to be like enemies missing you really have to keep your eye on the minimap a lot more than you would if you were playing with friends so keep your eye on the minimap if you see that no one else is on the map and the other lanes are empty it's a pretty good indication that they're coming to gank you so you really need to get out of there or get under your tower now in this situation I've just respawned and the enemy team are pushing my towers. Don't be afraid to engage this, you're in a great spot. Remember how I said you've got huge early game damage? Well with the enemy heroes on such low health you'll have no trouble capitalizing on situations where they overextend. It's all well and good getting kills but the majority of your CXP is going to come from laning. So remember to focus on laning as well and try not to roam too much until you've got a good advantage or you feel the time is right, like obviously engage in a favorable situation but don't worry about running around looking for kills try and focus on laning because you'll for sure get ahead that way so now my team are fighting in the middle lane, a common occurrence in Paragon and you really have two choices here. In this case I decide to push the tower and you'll notice a couple things here. Firstly, my first shot does 132 damage, then I use Buckshot on the tower shredding its armor and I'm now hitting 163, so a big difference. Remember to save your Buckshot for when you get to a tower. The second thing to note is not to force it. I see an enemy hero coming to defend the tower and I immediately back off. I might have gotten the tower but then it was also likely I was going to die, meaning that I could have lost my own tower as well, so I decide to rotate and help my team. Having a tower low on health is fine, they don't regenerate so you can push it again at a later stage. I rotate over and help my team get 2 kills, so in my mind I made the right choice. One thing you have to remember is not to overextend. My team are fighting in the jungle and you don't want to fight here when the enemy team have heroes like Gideon, Steel and Rampage. The paths are narrow and you can easily get trapped in an ult and why would you let Rampage regen extra health on top of his normal regen? Fortunately the enemy team engaged separately so we can pick them off but had they all come in at once we could have been in real trouble so I recommend you don't engage in the jungle unless you're certain that you're going to pick up the kill. If you follow these simple steps like laning, rotating when your team needs you, not overextending, you'll have no trouble getting ahead. Follow the build order to optimize all the stages of your game. You have great early game damage, even more mid game damage and with your life still mid to late game you're pretty much indestructible. I find most of my deaths occur early in the game when I'm being greedy because of the power I have but I'm sure you guys will do so much better than me. Until next time guys, peace.